Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back here to a Saturday. Hope everyone's having a wonderful weekend out here so far. Nice and sunny in Northern California. Supposed to be up in the upper 70s. About perfect weather. Uh, it is November 8th, 2025. Uh, straight up noon here along the West Coast. Latest activity here shows a 2.0. Uh, somewhere out here in the green flag. Hiding out here somewhere. Uh, notice up north here around the Wyoming area. I got a three-pointer this morning stirring up around Yellowstone National Park. 3.1. I uh, was just looking at the seismograph stations here at Yellowstone. There's the earthquake, 3.1. Uh, this is the closest station that's picking that up. Uh, pretty nice signature of a um, light earthquake. Also a couple other smaller events in there as well. This region, though, in the last month or, month or two have been, has been seeing a little bit of uptick in terms of earthquake activity. But it's also in an area, uh, this is the closest seismograph station here, or uh, excuse me, GPS station. It's in the same area where there's uh, some uplift going on there. A little bit of, of inflation across this area of Yellowstone. Uh, since about, uh, looks like about 2022 or so. Got some inflation going on there. Nothing big, but uh, it is, uh, you know, seeing some earthquake activity out there around the northwestern corner of uh, Yellowstone National Park. All right. Which is also, of course, a super volcano, but... No fear mongering out there, nothing to be concerned about uh, for now. Just uh, some periodic uplift and a little bit of earthquake activity. Also offshore here, off the Oregon coast, 3.2 earthquake coming in a few hours ago. That makes it the uh, second earthquake, or maybe even the third earthquake out here in the last week. Look at this one, right previous to the Cascadia subduction zone there. It's right where the, uh, uh, the plate pretty much subducts here the Juan de Fuca plate subducting underneath the North American plate a little bit of activity stirring up out there today and within the last week uh, Northern California a handful of smaller quakes down here one from yesterday one from today a couple twos nothing big going on San Francisco area pretty quiet not a whole lot going on there some older activity from yesterday and Southern California well it looks a little spotty down there I don't see a whole lot of activity right now uh, a couple ones out there around the Ridgecrest area and um, the San Jacinto Fault Zone. But that's uh, that's looking a little quiet out there. Refresh that. Make sure that's the latest map it is. Really nothing above uh, 2.5. Pretty small microquake activity out there today. Uh, Texas area. A little swarming out there around the Pecos, Texas. Outside of Pecos here. Up in the oil fields. Permian Basin is pretty much always active out here for earthquake activity some movement also outside of san antonio and the oil fields down there nothing major going on across the rest of the country uh take a look here at hawaii you've got a couple earthquakes stirring up here around the area over towards the lohi seamount as well getting a little scattered swarm we better go see what's going on there real quick at the uh, kilauea volcano I'm not for sure if it's erupted yet haven't heard any news on the uh, the eruption. But let's go take a look, see what we got. Latest information here is still from uh, four days ago. I was just chatting about uh, some overflow of one of the vents. Uh, I'll give a quick glance here at the uh, webcam imagery of Kilauea Volcano up at the summit area and still smoldering, <laughs> still smoking out there. Of course, that's very common, very normal. Uh, looks like we're getting close to an eruption here. Let's go see the deformation data. Give us a good clue on what's going on below the surface. Leveling out a little bit. In fact, we're going down slightly. This is the electronic tilt at the Kilauea Summit and the East Rift Zone. Of course, here's our last eruption that lasted for a short while, 30, uh, episode 35. Since then, since about the 18th or so, we've been going up. 18th of last month, we've been going up in terms of inflation. This one fairly lengthy, lasting a longer duration than the previous ones. Uh, be interesting to watch, see what takes place here. Either way, a little bit of a little bit of a deviation from the norm. Nothing major for now, but we'll continue to watch it. Again, we could see an eruption out there at uh, any time. Uh, let's take a look at the Earthquake 3D globe here. Uh, anything newer, major going on here? Clustering going on across the Philippines area southward. Nothing new. 
no bigger earthquake activity. Some super deep quakes there around the Fiji, Tonga region. Getting a little bit of newer activity here in this quiet zone around the Vanuatu area. Of course, this is a region I'm kind of watching here for some larger movement. Just the way things have been behaving back here across the subduction zone here. Putting a lot of strain in this zone that's been somewhat quiet. But we did have a 4.6 there uh, this morning. But I do think we'll see something a little bit larger fill in there. Uh, let's see what else we have. Where's that movement into the Gulf of California? Looks like there's a little bit of activity further south today. 4.1. It really hasn't shifted up north. Otherwise, we'd be seeing that uh, kick up there in the Southern California region. But it's really not right now. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that. 2.0 out there around the Puerto Rico area. South America, nothing new. Just twos and threes like normal. 4.8 down across the South Sandwich Trench. Here's the older earthquake there from yesterday. Five pointer out in the Atlantic. Uh, swarming still like crazy out in Turkey. Super deep earthquake here around Italy, it looks like. Uh, we better go see what's going on out there real quick. I'm not for sure exactly how close that is to the Campe Flagre fields up here. Um, let's see. Well, we got the Campe Flagre fields right up here, but there's an earthquake. I think it's a little bit down south here. Uh, doesn't look like it's anywhere around this area. A couple smaller quakes out there in the 1 and 2 range over the last couple days, but I don't see anything of any uptick. No major increase in activity there across the Campe for the Grey Fields in Italy for now. Uh, let's see what else we have here on the globe. Yeah, just kind of a starting off. I mean, it's halfway through the day right now, but really not a whole lot of heavy, large earthquake activity. Just kind of a minor, minor day. I don't even think we got anything above 6.0, maybe even above 5.5 here. Let me see what we got. So the five pointers there from yesterday. See the number of those? So far today, after midnight, the largest one is only a 4.8. That's down there uh, across the South Sandwich Trench. So. Look at that. 66.6. 6. That's an interesting number. All right. That's down there across the, uh, well, Drake's Passage over here, Scotia Sea, subduction zone right here. A lot of interesting activity down here recently. Uh, space weather activity. See if anything's going on here. Um, I know we were looking at some uh, potential aurora activity last night. Let's see, did it ever stir up? Doesn't look like it. We're back down way low. Not a whole lot of roar activity. Things stirred up a little bit last night, but it was being suppressed by that BTBZ component, which uh, pretty much squashes anything that's coming in. This is pretty tight as it can get. Uh, nothing. Even with the uh, high speed up there a little bit around 600 or so, we're not going to see any roar activity. But you notice that dense plasma cloud that we were expecting to hit. I um, believe it was supposed to be around last night or so. Uh, it never showed up here, so that missed us completely. Um, sometimes those forecasts here that they put out from the Space Weather Prediction Center, it rings true, and then sometimes it's uh, just a complete miss. I know we got a little bit of the high-speed solar wind stream, but that dense plasma cloud there that was shot off from a uh, recent solar flare uh, completely missed us. I don't see it anywhere on the plasma density. All right, let's take a look at what we got now. Uh, a little bit of backing off here on the solar flare activity. Notice that it's not as sizzly. Is that even a word? Sizzling <laughs> as the last couple days here. We've seen just a sizzle of C and M flare activity and X flare activity the days past. Uh, that is starting to flatline a little bit here. That tells me that sunspots may be getting ready to uh, uh, stabilize. Let me go to the most recent imagery going to be this one right here and uh, we'll see what it looks like here today this is a region of interest it's still you know got some decent complexity there number of different cores took a little while to load for some reason of course it's high uh, resolution imagery that uh, sunspot up here this is the one that produced the x 1.8 a couple days ago and a number of m flares 
That one still looks promising, maybe for some uh, stronger flaring activity. Just because it's taking a little breather right now does not mean it's completely falling apart. Also, this region back over here, uh, this kind of looks like it's starting to decay a little bit. Um, yeah, there's a little bit less activity in this sunspot. But uh, we'll continue to watch this one. This one here is directly facing the planet. That's going to be sunspot number um, 4274. That's uh, large, definitely large in size. Look at the uh, visible disk here. Of course, this is a little old. That sunspot is more right around this area. But uh, still pretty neat to see. Um, it looks like these guys are still forecasting maybe unsettled conditions here over the next couple nights. I don't think it's going to stir up into any G2 class storm, but that's what they're showing. Um, yeah, I don't like to say, I don't think there's going to be anything of that nature, but that's what they show up here. I was looking at the data and there's really not a whole lot that has changed. Let me go see here from the Space Weather Prediction Center. We'll take a look at the latest model here. And yeah, see here was that big shot of plasma density that was supposed to hit us. That missed us. Otherwise, that would show up like that on the, um, well, there's another, looks like another small CME with a little shot of plasma uh, that's expected to hit us here. It looks like maybe tonight, tomorrow night, but again, I don't think it's going to be anything big. I don't, I don't think we're going to be up around the G2 class storm there. That's just kind of a little blip of some activity, but this one here missed us completely. The high, the high speed solar wind stream hit us, but it was a combination here. If you look on the model, of some high-speed solar wind stream right here in the green line and then backed up by that big CME. This is Earth here in the green, um, but that plasma missed us. Now we're going to get a tail end of a CME, so this may not even play out. You know, More than likely, it probably won't, just the way things are going right now, but that's what the forecast is calling for. Uh, I just don't see it. Um, flaring activity. These guys have dropped their flaring for now. It was up around 35% chance. I'm going to keep mine up there for the day. Um, M flare at 70% chance. Uh, let's see. Nothing else major going on in that department. Let's check out the close approach asteroids here to the planet. See if anything's traveling our way. This one is really close here. That is super close. 29 foot newly discovered bus size asteroid coming in to i was going to say 200,000 but that's this is only 22,000 miles that's a pretty close one there that uh is getting down to that level where we had one last year come in about 12,000 miles uh but a 30 foot rock yeah 30 foot rock would make a uh I'd make a decent fireball if that were to show up, you know, hit the atmosphere there. But uh, it's interesting. Newly discovered. Coming in today, it looks like. 22,000. That is super close there. Just goes to show you they're always, always uh, finding new um, rocks out there. What's crazy is the majority of these are coming in uh, today. But these are way out there, millions of miles. But stuff like this, you don't see all that often. Um, 29 foot, not anything big, but it, uh, like I say, it would definitely leave a, a neat, uh, make a neat little fireball. Not a whole lot for severe weather today. There's a moderate or a marginal risk here in the dark green. It looks like maybe for some tornado activity, a little bit of wind and some hail threats out there today. All right. Looking down the road at the, um, uh, West coast. I want to cover this because we got storms coming in here next week. Uh, looks promising there across the entire state of California, mainly Northern California up here where I'm at. And I'm okay with that. Um, decent precipitation accumulation rates there. Looks like uh, Thursday into Friday, probably be a series of storm systems here coming in for the West Coast. A um, little bit of a change here out of the north. That's some colder air. That's one thing we haven't had here in California yet is a blast of cold air. And it looks promising here that we'll see some colder uh, temperatures coming in here towards the, uh, not next Friday, but the following Friday there. Of course, this could all change, but that looks pretty neat. 
I like to see this out here along the West Coast. Much better than 80s and 90s. In fact, this weekend, though, we're supposed to be around 78, 80 degrees out here around Chico in Northern California. It's about, about 75 miles north of Sacramento. And um, I guess I can handle a couple days of some warmer weather, but I'm a cold weather guy. I like the rain and the wind. And I wish we had snow down here in the Sacramento Valley, but it just doesn't happen. Uh, it doesn't happen uh, all that often. Have to go up to the uh, mountains to get that. Alrighty, um, let's see, Yellowstone, a little spike there. I don't see any swarms going on there at Yellowstone. I mean, aside from that three-pointer this morning, I just want to see real quick here what we got. See, that's where the three-pointer was. There was a little swarming over here a couple days ago. A little earthquake activity overnight. Nothing big. Uh, surprisingly, that three-pointer didn't even show up here. But it did up on this station. There's that three-pointer right here. Anyway, we'll continue to watch it. Things are always changing out here. Always getting surprises. Have a good one. Enjoy your Saturday. We'll see you guys out here for the uh, Saturday night update. Of course, unless something major happens, right now it's kind of kicking off on a, on the low side of earthquake activity here. I know we got some activity around Japan, but a majority of these are from yesterday. Uh, really nothing new to report there across the Nankai Trough, but it's that's an area of interest for sure. All right, folks, take care. I'm out of here. Have a good one.